Hello, welcome to the Monday, March 16th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, DDA came across an interesting PDF, and if you know anything about DDA, you probably know what's coming next. He's going to use some Python scripts to take the PDF apart. What was kind of interesting about this PDF was that it used incremental updates. In PDFs, when you make a change to the PDF, the change can actually be recorded as an incremental update. So when you're retrieving the PDF and look at the viewer, you're seeing the new version of the PDF. But when you're looking at the actual source of the PDF, you're seeing the original PDF and then an appendix essentially with the modification. This is typically not what a malware author wants because if the original PDF uh, remains unchanged, then of course any anti-malware signatures and so will probably still recognize the original PDF. Also in this case, because the attacker apparently did this a few times, we sort of get a nice change history of various attacks, various campaigns that essentially used the same document with some minor changes. Same also applies to the metadata of uh, the document. So we exactly know the timestamps, for example, when the PDF was modified. What is actually sort of interesting about the timestamp was that it used a UTC time zone of minus eight hours, which uh, turns out to be the Bitcoin islands uh, that are in this time zone. And this island is famous for being apparently the island where the bounty mutineers uh, stranded. So I guess uh, mutineering no longer really pays the bills. So they're switching now to attacking with PDFs uh, versus bullets and cannons. And one issue that keeps coming up uh, with the COVID-19 crisis going on is VPN access. Of course, everybody's trying to work from home, trying to do so securely, and to use a VPN to connect back to company resources is the standard way of sort of solving that security challenge. There's uh, one problem with this, that VPNs have a limited capacity. It's not just bandwidth, it's also the number of connections, uh, the number of licenses sometimes times that you need to allow a certain number of users to connect and then also what resources they connect to for example in particular cloud resources like office 365 tend to use quite a few connections so uh, what Guy was doing here with his diaries was just sort of uh, polling, uh, starting a conversation to figure out what problems people ran into. So please, if you do run into any issues like this, share, uh, leave a comment or just uh, send us a message and we'll keep this updated with whatever works, didn't work or uh, basically just what limitations you ran into. Now, most of the time when you're using an Ethernet network, there isn't really too much uh, happening in terms of errors and such. Ethernet networks tend to run pretty smoothly, and I'm talking about wired Ethernet here. But occasionally, you're running into a situation where due to faulty hardware or whatever, you have quite a few of invalid Ethernet frames or runs, uh, which typically refers to Ethernet frames with a bad checksum. The problem here is if you're debugging a network like this, it actually turns out to be quite difficult to capture uh, these frames. Network cards will typically drop them and software like, for example, TCP will never see these frames. Rob ran into this issue and wrote up some of the tricks that he was using to actually collect uh, that data and uh, debug his uh, network. Anybody who has done any kind of web application work has probably run into the problem that cookies tend to be a little bit the Achilles heel of some of the authentication schemes being used for web applications. Once I have your cookie, I'm you for all practical purposes. And well, malware has sort of for a long time known that and abused that. Latest example is some Android malware that Kaspersky has found. They call it simple enough 
cookie thief in that it does specifically target your Chrome cookies on your Android device and then sends them off in particular in order to hijack Facebook accounts. And I started out uh, this podcast uh, with uh, this uh, brief diary that we had this weekend about uh, working from home and VPNs and such. Well, uh, you will hear me talking from Jacksonville here at least until the end of May. But a lot of companies, of course, are facing now the problem where they have a lot more workers working remotely. We have Lance Spitzner uh, with the SAN Security Awareness uh, Project present a specific webcast for that on Tuesday. I'll add a link to the show note. And it's not just a webcast uh, on Monday. You'll also uh, see a deployment kit for securing your workforce at home, which is a set of sort of training videos and such that SANS will be releasing for free in order to sort of jumpstart this process of securing all these people that now have to work from home, that have to use VPNs and such to get them ready for some of the specific threats that they may be exposed to. And yes, the bad guys aren't stopping, actually. Just uh, end of last week, I saw that a hospital in Slovenia, so an part of the world that's just sort of starting to really have to deal with uh, the COVID-19 outbreak got hit by ransomware and had to cease operation for a while during this critical time. So please make sure that your people are properly prepared for working from home and all of these new scenarios. And again, the link will be found in the show notes. That's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.